Hi everybody, this is the Key Stage 4 Life Skills lesson and we're going to be looking at um, digital literacy and how to keep yourself safe online. There's going to be quite a few lessons on this, but this is just the introduction really to the topic. So I want to think, start with, I've used the phrase digital literacy. What does that actually mean? So digital literacy is um, using information communication technologies, so devices, to find, evaluate, create and communicate information. So that would be searching, retrieving information, assessing it for its reliability, is it relevant, creating your own content and communicating with people. And that is really important because we're not just talking about the technical skills here, we're talking about the cognitive skills, so the understanding and the processes that go into using all this digital technology, and then the technical skills that you all probably already have. So it's very different from regular literacy because it's, it's um, you know, reading, writing, grammar, syntax is what we mean by literacy, but we're now talking about digital literacy. So how we read and write online or how we use the technology Probably you all have smartphones, you might have Kindles, I know you'll probably have gaming devices, but there's a lot more to it. So we've now got to think really seriously about the impact of social media and things like we right now are uploading content onto YouTube, sharing things on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and, and the impact that that has. So in the world we're living in today, there are essential skills that everybody needs to have um, to achieve our goals and, and our day-to-day -day lives, but also these are things that you're going to need when you leave the edge and you go on to find work or at college. So what do I mean by digital literacy? And there's quite a few principles to it. There's quite a few things to think about. So the first thing is the basics of the digital devices, so the general knowledge. And this is where you guys will be really, really strong, probably stronger than most of your teachers, knowing what devices are out there and how they work, how you switch them on, how you save your work and so on. Then we need to know how to use them. So can you use these devices in your day to day life and in your working life? Then we need to think about actual work and creative expression. So not just using your phone to make a call, but how do we use the devices that we have to, to make our working lives easier, to make your school work better? And that's something that we don't do very often in school, but also to express your creativity. Communicating and collaborating right now, I can't be with you. So we are using the technology to communicate the lesson plans. Hopefully there will be collaboration with people working together. We have used them in school to we have Teams meetings. We've had um, students communicating with employers. We've had interviews on Zoom. We've had all sorts of things going on. So we, ha we have been learning how to use this technology to communicate. Processing the information. So not just searching, but finding the information that you need, researching a certain topic, finding data to back up what you're claiming. Really big one we need to think about is privacy and how to protect your privacy. The legal and ethical practice now. Legal, we've obviously talked before about um, what is legal and illegal in terms of sharing images, um, passing on information. But we also need to think about what's ethical, what's right, where are our moral lines and what do we think is acceptable. So if you're on social media, think about what you're writing, think about what you're saying to people. And sometimes you might be breaking laws and you're not aware of it. Sometimes there might not be a law, but you're breaking some kind of moral code you're saying or doing something that you wouldn't do in person. We need to have a balanced attitude. There are people, maybe not so much anymore, but there are people who are quite scared about new technology and, and don't want it in their lives. They don't want to use it. But again, we need to be balanced and we need to understand the benefits that it has. We need to be aware of the impact it has and the role it has in society at the moment. And again, not just the, the positives, but maybe some of the negatives that are coming out of its increased use. We need to be aware that we are always going to be learning. We need to be familiar and comfortable with all new technology. And we need to be pushing ourselves to learn, to make sure that we stay up to date. We need to make decisions on what is the appropriate digital technology to use. I've got a job to do. What should I be using? Is this better done using a laptop, a PC? Is this better done using a certain app that's already devised to make this, this work easier? And the last one is to confidently and creatively um, use devices and, and technology to make our lives more efficient, to work more effectively. So how can we do that? How can we tie it all together to make
So what I want you to do now is I want you to think about how we can use this in the real world and how we can use this practically. So I'm going to give you a scenario. You've got a little sister, a niece, a younger relative or something like that. And I want you to imagine they've been bought an iPhone for Christmas and their parent says to you, I don't know what I'm doing. We've got this iPhone. We want to give it to her, but we just don't know what to do. I want you to, in your exercise book now, I want you to spend five minutes just writing down the things that you think they need to you just consider, just think about in the first instance before they give this iPhone to an eight year old girl. So I want you to pause the video now and write down a list of things. OK, if you're back with us, thank you. Um, so these are some of the safety tips that are given to people when they're starting out with something. So, again, we need to apply this to a young person now because we're not talking about an adult so there are things that the adult needs to be doing there's things that the young person needs to be doing so for example user agreements how many of you actually read the user agreements how many of you read through the terms and conditions and disclaims before you tick accept 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 we don't we're terrible for it i know i don't always however we need to think really carefully we need to think are we agreeing to things that we wouldn't normally agree to are we giving away data that we wouldn't want to share so we do need to think carefully about what we're agreeing to. And again, that would most certainly be a job for the adult. Think about whether there are any security issues, privacy issues. Are they sharing any information and, and how we use that information? So even just setting up a phone, you know, you have to input a lot of information. Think about that and think very carefully about whose information do you want on there? Do you want the adult or the child? Setting up a password sounds easy, but you need to remember it. Do you want the child to know it or do you want just the adult to know it? Do you want some apps that are locked and some that they are able to access? If it is um, the child knowing it, make sure it's not a password for other things in your house that you wouldn't want them to have or accidentally share with other people. Um, we would say treat them like your bank account, never share them with anybody. I see students in school letting, you know, allowing other people to unlock their phone and things like that. Just think about all the information that is on them. We really need to stress to young people, particularly people younger than us, that they shouldn't be sharing that information, particularly if they don't know um, the ins and outs of how the device works. And then again, every app everything you put on that phone you need to check the privacy settings you do not want to be sharing um certain aspects of of your life with people out there and you don't want even companies sometimes you don't want them knowing um things about you and you certainly don't want them knowing things about a younger relative so those are some of the things that um were given in terms of having a new device I wonder how many of those that you came up with Wait to imagine now that they've had their phone, it's all set up, it's ready to go. They've got used to using it. They've been using it in the house. There's always been an adult present when they're using it, but they're now going to go out to the park or they're going to go up the house or to their nan's house who doesn't really know much about phones. And they're going to be using that phone without an adult overseeing them. And again, this is not best practice. But what do you need to think about? What do you need to put in place to ensure that that person is safe? And again, I want you to pause the video and I want you to spend five minutes just coming up with a list of as many things as possible that you can think of um, that they need to think about. So we were looking at how to keep safe um, if you're out and about. One of the first things that is raised is to turn off Bluetooth. So if it's not needed, don't have it on. Um, think really carefully about GPS. So actually I find GPS is really useful in terms of my family. We kind of know where we are because we have um, find my friends on our phones, but actually you don't want other people knowing. So you don't want that shared with other apps and other people being able to find out where you are. Um, it's not particularly good practice to connect automatically to public Wi-Fi, so making sure that you don't always um, do that by default. And lots of high profile cases of um, kids being able to rack up huge bills on their parents' credit cards. So if there is an um, opportunity to use in-app purchasing, you need to turn that off for a young person because um, they might be able to spend money without you realising or set passwords or somehow restrict particularly looking at the things that they're accessing and the things that they're um, buying. Um, particularly Android devices are, are prone to viruses, so you need to make sure that you're keeping your um, your software up to date to protect them um, and also keep up updating your operating systems to make sure you're using the, the most up to date operating system so you don't have bugs and, and glitches. Um, and then again, 
ethically, I don't know how you feel about this, but obviously you need to be backing up your music, your photos and videos. But if you're talking about a young person, should you also be checking what's on their phone? Should you be checking what music they have, what photographs are there, what videos there are and what data has been used on their phone? If there's wearable um, devices, so we're talking about watches and um, things like that, again, making sure you understand how the Bluetooth works and is it are you managing to control it? And um, thinking about what that young person is doing with that device when it's not in use. Is there a passcode on it? Is it somewhere safe? To have people seen them put the passcode in, can they then access the device? Um, think very carefully about what personal information you want people to share. And there's lots of advice out there about using different um, usernames and, and not using your, your actual name. So that you then become searchable, particularly in chat rooms and things like that. Again, my advice if you're talking about an eight year old is that they shouldn't be in a chat room. Um, and again, even exercise apps sometimes will track your location and will then publish the walk or the bike ride that you've just done. And you need to be careful because that's then pinpointing where you started and where you ended, which is obviously where you live. Um, what I want you to do now um, is think that they've got their phone, it's all set up, and um, their parent then says, well, actually, they're spending too much time on it. So again, I want you to think about a lot of information on the screen. I want you to read it through, and I want you to think of the three ways that you think you would be able to tell straight away if a young person is spending too much time on their phone. And then I want you to think of three ways, and I want you to think of three practical, three doable ways that we could try and manage their time on social media. So looking through all the information on this page, I want you to pick out the best three ways to tell if someone's using it too much, and the best three solutions. So again, you can pause the video now. Right then, so your final task, you've got a lot of things written down in your book at the moment. What I want you to do is I want you to use that information and the things that you wrote down, obviously we've built upon, we've added and I hopefully have mentioned things that you haven't thought about um, and things that you, you know, you now would think would be important. And I want you to use all of that to create a leaflet and I want you to be supporting a, a young person. So again, you can imagine someone slightly older if you'd like, but a leaflet supporting a young person and how to safely use a tablet or a phone. So obviously the things that you listed that you came up with, but I want you to add in some of the things that we discussed and I want you to make it as user friendly as possible. So for example, if we're talking about how we create certain media, if we're doing a leaflet, we want to have bold, we want to have headings, we want to have bullet points, we want to use colour, we want to make it so a young person can quickly see the information. Now, bearing in mind, that, that is something that you can do on pen and paper, but it would be much better to be done using some kind of technology. So if you do have access to a, um, a device, obviously you're watching this, but you have access to some kind of um, word processing or um, drawing or pages or whatever, I'd like you to have a go at creating a leaflet with text and images supporting younger pupils. It would be absolutely fantastic if you did do that, if you wanted to share it with us. Um, that would be great so we could see what you'd done. Thank you very much and there'll be another lesson next week.